seen this video and decided to try this, but my way. I chose vining plants with large leaves to offer them much needed hydration since groundhogs or woodchucks do not drink water. They also hate pepper, so I left their groundhog garden completely unpeppered, but I peppered my garden to serve as a strictly restricted area. This is the third year I've used pepper, so they might be used to my guidelines by now. And I chose something beautiful for the center of their garden, a bonus just for me. Welcome to Bren in the Groundhog Garden. Today is May 17th and I have chosen to do pumpkins because back here we've got some groundhogs and I don't really care if they eat those leaves so I'm using this as no muss, no fuss, a groundhog distraction. 26th of May and I want to show you how well these pumpkins, that pumpkin, I believe those are the blue doll hybrid pumpkin in the back and how well these sunflowers are doing. It's June 6th and I am in Northwest Ohio, Zone 5. You can see that the groundhogs have eaten the top and they got a hold of this pumpkin here. So I had the cardboard here so that I could put grass mulch over it to where I thought that would look better. But since they're coming over here now and eating my new zucchini, probably need to dump every abundance of seed that I have in here so that I can create some more leaves for them. So I'm going to take up all, all the cardboard, I'm going to scratch everything up, and I'm going to dump my seeds and water them. And hopefully that will keep them out of the area I want them to be out of. Because up here, look at that zucchini already. I got some cucumber here going. I've had to go ahead and raise up the lettuce. Look how beautiful this little mini, mini um, it's a sugar cube melon. It's gorgeous. I already need to put another one here and I can see they're reaching for this here. So I'm gonna need to do this today so I don't bother these tendrils. I've got watermelon here, some more melon here, different kind, different kind of mini cantaloupe. These are both mini cantaloupes. That is a sugar baby watermelon. And I've got melon here, melon here in that pot, and all along here except this, this is green beans. So I'm really trying to divert them to stay out of where I want them to stay out. Look at how beautiful this lettuce is, you guys. Look at this. And I've peppered this to keep them off of it. And I have a nice lettuce head back there because I totally surrounded it with this. <laughs> so I thought at least I might get one head of lettuce if they ate the rest of them. Here I've got some lovely red onions coming up. They look like delicate little pieces of grass. Got some zinnia. I've got a bunch of stuff. Obviously I want them to eat nothing at all up here. Hey guys, it is June 12th today. You can see I planted some more here and they're starting to come up. I have not really seen to where they've been out here for about a week eating. I can see that these taller ones in the middle of these sunflowers are starting to come back. That's excellent. You can see that a ground mole went through here and it looks like it popped up, yep, popped up one of my seeds. So I'm just going to push that back down about an inch and maybe that will take, oh, I see another one over here. I'm gonna do the same thing with about an inch. I watered all this last night so it's still moist. These seeds obviously are still in a germation process. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like this one's going to come back. This is that Blue Dell Hybrid. And look over here. There's where another ground mole. Oh, yeah, and you can see. Look at this. All right, we got some more here. We got some more coming up here and here. And look at that. I think this might be a mini melon I put in here. Okay, this is good. This is good. I'm just going to take this out. Oh, okay, and we've got something coming up underneath here. So, it pushed it up while it was germating. But I'm just going to assist real quick. And get that off. And I'm going to leave it, and tonight I'm going to come back and water. June 22nd. We had extreme heat today, upper 90s. That's gonna happen again today. Looks like if they leave them alone, they might be able to come back. The 26 today. I think something happened to the groundhog because it has not eaten anything at all out here or anywhere. See here, this is where they bit off before. Now it's split and it's done this on several. Our pumpkins are doing great. Um, remember I just put in whatever seeds I wanted out here that I had a lot of. It's July 1st and things are really growing and flowering out here and I have a whole lot of grass and weeds and nothing has eaten back here in this garden which I reserve for the groundhogs or any place else in my yard. So I am wondering if something happened to the groundhog. <sighs> so, I mean, I have a little mixed feelings about that. I have to tell you the truth. But I usually, this is also my burn pile where I get my potash. So I'm not worried at all about these weeds. It's not gonna continue for next year. I'll burn them up. And remember, I planted more stuff like I put, this is, I put this in addition and this in addition so that I would have more leaves out here so I could distract that groundhog from eating the stuff that I really wanted. I don't eat pumpkin. I use it as decoration only, so I really didn't care. But now he's not doing his job or maybe he's in his summer home. I don't know, because it is pretty hot. Maybe he went to the Hamptons. Oh, look, hang on, whoop, whoop. Something's getting these lower ones. All right, I, I have mixed feelings. I don't know if I should feel good about that or not. July 3rd out here. And I notice that we're starting to develop our heads. There we go. It's July 13th. I thought you would like to see this groundhog garden that I made for them and they are totally disrespecting. Looks pretty good this way, doesn't it? Now when you go in the back, you can see that I did nothing at all for weed prevention. We're starting to get the sunflowers headed up and we're gonna have multiple heads on these. Let's see, oh look, we've got a pumpkin down here. That's outstanding. We have been eating something. I don't know how recent that is, but okay, that's good. I don't feel like they're quite that ungrateful. So I'm waiting for one of them just to come out of this leaves and um, go for my throat. You know, that's David Letterman talking right there. How squirrels would attack him. Those people, all jokes. Look, we've got something down here pollinating this. So that's gonna be fantastic. All right, well, a lot of growth for the groundhog. Second of July, just out here looking at our groundhog garden. And got some cantaloupe coming out of the bed. And I have a nice big looking, I don't think it's quite a pumpkin. It really looks like a gourd. You can see lots and lots of flowers in the kitchen window. Lots of bee activity out here. Over here, look at how cute these are. These might be those little creamy ones that I picked up last year. Yeah, look at the bees. They're 
loving it. There's my sunflower. First one, but look, right next to it is gonna bloom out. Hey guys, July 24th. We're gonna start to get more sunflower heads right up there. The melons are starting to come out of the bed. Remember I overpacked this for the groundhog so they could eat these leaves. Look at how adorable that is. Look at that tiny, dreamy little mini pumpkin. And this one over here is that one, which seems to all be from the same stem down here. And when you compact this stuff like this, you are restricting light. But again, I wasn't doing this for the growth, really, of anything, except to grow lots and lots of leaves. Look at that pollinator in there. So that the groundhogs would be distracted by this. Oh gosh, there's three pollinators right here in a row. Four. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Excellent. And that sunflower there lost its yellow leaves real quick, like less than a week. Hey guys, August 1st, back here in this groundhog garden. Look at how gorgeous these sunflowers are. And you can see the original that's sort of hung over and on its way to being done, not done, but seeded. So now it's heavier. And you can see that we've got more shoots of the sunflower around it. And there's also a little single stalk here. And we've got another one way over here, which we looked at the other day. And we've got some more. You can see the very tips, how they're starting to come out here. The melons are starting to come out, so I'm hoping the groundhogs will be distracted by that. So they won't got any of my stuff over here or anything up front. I absolutely hate the telephone poles and all the wires back here. Check out my Etsy shop, T-Shirt Garden Company, featuring gardening, no mo may, sewing, tiny house, zen meditation designs. Link in box below. Hey guys, August 6th. Look at how well these sunflowers are doing for us out here in the groundhog garden. Okay, I could not take the weeds back there any longer, suppress them going to seed. So I have used the abundance of cardboard I've got in the house. I just put things here to basically make sure it doesn't fly away in any more wind storms. Look at how beautiful this is, you guys. We've got seven sunflowers on this one stalk. Oh, that's exceptional. Again, I don't pepper anything, so they can eat what they want to eat. Gorgeous. You guys, how much do you love nature in sunflowers? The abundance. Even if you grow a groundhog garden, it is still fulfilling guys especially if you just decide to put sunflowers right in the middle just opening all right you guys it is august 11th and look at how beautiful these sunflowers are in this groundhog garden pollinator in here along with the fly flies are also pollinators they don't get a lot of the glory though Look at this cute little pumpkin. Oh my goodness, I hope no one gets it so I can use it for decoration. How gorgeous is that? This one here is starting to go to seed. Going to seed and when they start developing their seeds, they get heavier. So that's why you see them droop down. This one is still fairly upright have not gotten any seed development yet. Look at this one, half open, half closed. And I've got another one of those pumpkins down here. Everything out here is a bonus. Because this is 
the Groundhog Garden. All right, I've got some cherry tomatoes happening out here. And if you notice, I've got real tiny ones down at the bottom. And that's because they gnawed at the bottom of that. Also back here, you can see to where they're all split up. Gorgeous. September 3rd. See that pumpkin here. Got a little pumpkin here. Got another one starting here. I'm gonna get a couple more of these. And we had a big storm and it looks really, really crappy out here. But it is zone five into the season and this is what happens. And we're starting to develop lots and lots of seeds over here. I don't know. Do you think these groundhogs appreciated this garden at all? All right, it is September 7th. I am out here in this groundhog garden. I have cut the heads of all of the sunflowers. I made bouquets out of what didn't have seed heads. All right, here is another fruit of our groundhog labor, which really was not any labor at all. Look at how gorgeous they are. Oh, look, this one is hiding. Isn't that gorgeous? This is mainly the evening sun mix. Should probably do it like that, huh? All right, and also the lemon queen. Gorgeous. Aren't they just gorgeous? Sunflowers, Law and Order Criminal Intent, Vincent D'Onofrio. I don't know how I could go wrong. And the rest of the seeds are in here. I have them facing up. And look at this one. This is a gray mammoth sunflower. I didn't think I got one of these, but I did. Because I can tell by those seeds. Let them dry out. I'm not going to put the lid on because I need airflow and circulation. I am going to take my pruners here and I'm going to chop down all of these sunflower stalks. And I'm also going to go through here and find all of the little treasures that are buried in the grass and in the weeds. <sighs> all right, it's finished. I'm kind of exhausted and hungry, of course. And I'm gonna leave all of this stuff out here to dry out, except I'll take my harvest in, I'll take the seeds to the garage, because the birds will just go right into that tub and get them, because it's pretty easy prey now. This right here, this stalk is huge, because that is that gray striped mammoth sunflower. These are perfect if you want to grow your green beans up them. Look at that. That really is not too bad for expecting nothing and the groundhogs to eat everything. I took down the sunflowers. It was just gonna look awful. So sometimes you just have to make those decisions, people. Okay, I did leave the tomato in. It's gonna get a whole lot more sun. I only have one sweet 100 growing right now on the property. So this will be actually kind of nice. So I'm gonna come through here and do some picking. Okay, here is the haul from the Groundhog Garden. If you guys know the name of these pumpkins, I really need to know, because I think I've already said that, but I just sort of um, took a rattened out pumpkin and harvested the seeds. I have no idea what the name is. And these are the two that I picked earlier. Probably, I think it was July. So I am not set, upset at all about this little harvest. It's a total bonus for me. You guys, look at how cute that is. Zero dollars. And look, I have a matching basket underneath for all of my seed catalogs. Look at this. Had everything here already. What a fantastic bonus I got from that diversionary groundhog garden. Look at that. I keep saying look at that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I 
I think it's just so pretty. They're so beautiful though. I like all these little orange flecks in here. And I love this depression green milk glass look in here. It looks really good with all of the green. Oh, couldn't be more pleased. Okay, at Kroger, these look a lot like what I grew, and they want a dollar a piece. December 4th, and I've had these for what, 60, 90 days? So I need to decorate for Christmas, and I also noticed that these are getting a little wrinkly, a little moldy, and a little bit cushy. I really got a lot of enjoyment out of this. Anyway, you guys, I think that that is going to be it for this pumpkin video this year. Now, the name of these gorgeous pumpkins, I would love for you to comment below and let me know. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd be so kind to leave a like and subscribe because I got more stuff coming and I'm already thinking about what I'm going to grow in video next year. Spoiler alert, probably a lot of tomatoes. Thank you so much for watching and I invite you again to subscribe as I have been gardening for over 40 years and have a lot to teach, show, grow, review, experiment with, and my favorite, a specific variety everything deep dive. So let's try new things together, mix it up, and have a glorious day.